We now rejoin Wood Doofus building a trash can already in progress. To install these drawer slides, I'm just making them flush with the front here because the uh, drawer front's going to come around there. I haven't even made a drawer box yet, but to install them, I got my level out. And I'm resting it on this front thing that I put on there, and I'm resting the back. Once I set the level, I put a little clamp there to hold it there while I put the screws in. I know the distance between the two side pieces of the cabinet are 18 and 7 eighths inches. And so all I have to do is subtract one inch and get 17 and 7 eighths. And then I have the front of my drawer box. And then I can build whatever style of box I want behind this front piece. In this case, I just put butt joints and just pinned a, uh, a thin piece of material to the bottom. Kept it real simple. I have the drawer fronts here, which uh, even though they're rounded over already, I think I need to trim a little bit off because they just come a little bit too close to the top. But I'd like to have some more clearance when the top comes on there. To install the drawer box, I went ahead and put a shim here to uh, space it between this little platform since it comes flush up to the bottom of the drawer slide. And I went ahead and clamped some blocks and also did some extra shimming. I needed an extra shim on this side, it's probably just slightly off, but once I get the box on here, everything seems level. All right, so since I want these drawer boxes flush with the front so the, uh, so the drawer front can sit out in front of them and come flush with everything else, I am going to just square it up, go ahead and pull one of these out, and just pull out the drawer box with it, keep it flush, and then screw in my first screw, and then I'll do it on the other side, and then we'll pull it out and do another screw. All right, so I'm finally satisfied with the way it functions. So to install the drawer front, I'm gonna use the same shim I was using the drawer boxes. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing and make it flush with this side. I have these oak stair treads and I think I'm going to try to use these for the top of this thing. So there are a lot of ways to hang drawer hardware and try to try to center it on the drawer and get it consistent and all that stuff. I do it differently almost every time. So you see in this drawer, I've marked the center point on top of some tape. I measured across and I measured up and down. Over here on this drawer, I have the same thing, but I put a little jig on top and it's clamped on there with the center transferred from this onto this. This is the hardware here and it's got the screws in it and I measured where the screw holes land and I put a piece of tape on my thing here so I know where the center is which is right there. That's going to be the center of the hardware which should match the center of the drawer and I also have marks on there for where the screw holes are. And I'm going to transfer those marks, which are right here, between here and here, should be one screw hole, and then between 
here and here should be another screw hole so I should be able to take this tape off of here now bada bing bada boom I should be able to screw here and here on my line and that should match up <laughs> this is the final product of the top I don't think I filmed any of this but it was just uh, some gray stain and then some black paint and a little bit of white paint to lighten it up in the end I wanted a little bit more contrast but sometimes you just work with what you got I use this water-based polyurethane I'm gonna put three coats on all the main exterior surfaces I'm gonna put one or two coats on the inside surfaces I want to be able to wipe things clean if there's any messes that happen I just installed this brush nickel hardware. I just couldn't stand not having some more contrast in the colors. The antique bronze was just too dark and it blended in too much. The stupid thing is that my kitchen has all brush nickel hardware already, so I should have went with this in the beginning. Now it's come time to attach the top. And the two main things that I see people use that that allow for wood movement are the Z-clips fasteners or these figure eight fasteners. And I'm going to be using these figure eights. I just like the simplicity of their install and uh, it's pretty fun. The only thing you have to be mindful of when you use tabletop fasteners like these, that they are not super strong. So if you try to carry around this heavy cabinet by the top, it might rip off. So they're not going to support the weight. Of the whole thing very well. These particular brackets have two different size uh, circles on their figure eight. One is a three quarters and one is a five eighths. And since I'm installing this on three quarter material for the apron area, I'm going to go ahead and use the smaller side or the five eighths to drill a Forstner bit hole to accept the figure eight. So when you're talking about wood movement, I am no expert at this. It expands this way and not this way because the grain goes this way. So when I have a skirt that is perpendicular to the grain, I'm going to need this thing to be able to move this way because that's the direction of the wood movement. It's going to be confusing. Well, I need to attach. I have some center, a center post and a back post. Just do your research so that you're installing these things right. I don't know what I'm talking about.
have to give a little bit of chisel to the corners here if you really want the proper movement of the figure eight fastener. If I'm wrong, make sure you tell me in the comments what I'm doing wrong. Otherwise, just tell me I'm great in the comments. That'll be, that'll be amazing. And the fastener should fit in there nicely. And then you just screw, I'm probably gonna screw a pilot hole and put a one and a quarter inch screw into the skirt and then a three quarter inch up through into the tabletop. All the cuts up until now, the very last cut, were easy. This one is the most important one and you don't want to mess it up because I don't have any more of this stuff and I have to get this right. So mark where you think you're going to cut it and then cut it a little big. And that way, if it is a little big, you can just trim it. It's what they call walking up or sneaking up on the cut. So it's better to make mo like four or five cuts even than to make one wrong cut and have to go buy more stuff, restain it, repolyurethane. That would be really annoying. All right, so I made my first cut. Got that snug and looking good. And with this one in, it's got a little bit of a lip. So like I said, I cut it a little bit big. So I'm just gonna shave maybe half a kerf off and it should be good. And looking pretty good. I think that's a winner. Let's talk about a couple mistakes that I noticed before we take it in the house. First of all, some glue problems. I thought it wasn't going to be an issue because I was painting, but since I was using thin paint or a watered down paint, I still had some of that glue squeeze out show up over time. Luckily with a rustic look, overall it's not a huge problem, but it would be if I was going for a more clean finished look. Not super happy with the drawer mechanism. It works okay. And this one, it catches on this side before it goes to this side, so it wobbles. And also when I was installing the drawers, they were getting caught as they went in, which means that it wasn't very square on install. So what I had to do was loosen some of these screws about a quarter turn to a half turn, and that solved the problem. But that makes it a little bit loose, and I'm not thrilled about that, but I finally got it to work on both of these drawers. Back here on the backing board and the baseboard, there was an issue. I think I said that I could have done them interchangeably, which was wrong. I should have put the backing board on first, and then had the baseboard come all the way to the back of that, so I didn't have this weird little gap. Between these two stair treads that I tried to put together, they they just didn't line up right, and the only way to solve that is to run both things through a planer until they're perfectly even. But I didn't want to run it through my planer because these stair treads are not solid wood, and I didn't want to accidentally cut off all the oak veneer 
and mess everything up. So I just decided that it would be fine if I use a distressed finish and it's really not a huge problem but definitely noticeable. Alright so that about wraps it up for this project. I really appreciate you watching. I think this turned out great despite all the mistakes that I made back and forth. And I think that's an important part of woodworking is just rolling with the punches and making sure you overcome things. Anyway until next time don't be afraid to be a doofus. Thank you.